down in the Grand Canyon at Skeleton Point, I thought it might be fun to do a little GPS test on my hike back up the South Kaibab Trail, up along the wall of the Grand Canyon, see how these GPS units do, see if they fail the way the older units did where the points were way off and it was all kinds of crazy. So uh, let me show you the units and then let's hit the trail and let's take a look at the GPS tracks. We have the GPS map 67i with multi-band and multi-GNSS on. There's an Epix Pro 51 millimeter with multi-band and multi-GNSS on. There's an Apple Watch Ultra 2 with the Work Outdoors app recording, an iPhone 15 Pro Max with Gaia GPS, and a Yuli Phone Armor 23 Ultra, which is an Android using Gaia GPS. And lastly, a Garmin InReach Mini 2 with activity recording set to high detail. Also worth noting, I had a few friends with me and I split the GPS units up among us as to not cause any interference between the different units. All right, so I've got this in, but to give you some context, the idea is that I'm starting off in a relatively open area. This is the start, because I'm starting at the bottom, so I'm starting right around here. And then on this 3D thing, we're gonna pull out of the 3D because it's kind of hard to see all the tracks. You can see we kind of go up a little bit and then we get into the parts that are a little more intense. And you can see by all the colors here that um, it didn't work well for some of the devices but I'll show you that in a second. But this is the part where it was really challenging, going up the actual wall of the Grand Canyon. All right, here are all of the tracks together. I'll put a key up on the screen. So let's just go through and see where they start to fall apart, which we got a little preview of a second ago. I have the underlying layer is Google um, Satellite, which is pretty accurate. And it's nice because it's the Grand Canyon, so you can see the trail. Uh, on the cliff sides, it's not going to be rerouted too much. It should be pretty um, accurate unless the map, bottom map is off. But here we are. You can see I'm a little bit off in the beginning. And here, this pink line, this is the Android, the Yuli Phone um, 23. And that's starting to struggle a little bit, which it really shouldn't because this area is pretty open. If I go back here and we look at it, you could see, you know, I've got a pretty clear view to the sky so it's uh, surprising that this is off a little bit here. This is a multi-band, multi-GNSS uh, unit that's using the Android location services. So Gaia GPS is basically reading whatever Android is giving it. And I have location services turned on and precise. So it should be working well, but it's struggling a little bit there. Let's keep going on this one. You can see here in the open, they're all doing pretty well. They're all hanging pretty tight here. There are parts where I went off the side, it was a little bit muddy, so there was a side trail, but this all looks uh, good here. Let's go to where it starts to fall apart. All right, here we are coming up the side of O'Neill Butte. This is O'Neill Butte right here. And you can see that the Android is struggling a bit. If we notch this up so you can get a little bit more contrast here, let's see. There you can see this pink, here we go. There's a big dropout. This is what I would see in the Grand Canyon on older units. I'm not expecting this from a multiband unit, so that's not that good. All the other ones are pretty much in the same place here as we continue up, and this is all open. Here they might struggle. Again, this Google satellite could be off a little bit, um, but here they're starting to struggle. This is a cliff wall right here, and if I go to this, this is what this section looks like in 3D here. You can see I'm going up, that's O'Neill Butte. And then I'm coming up here, this is Cedar Ridge. Let's see what Cedar Ridge looks like. But anyway, so far they're all pretty good. Here's Cedar Ridge, they're all good. And this is pretty, pretty open here. And the Android continuing to struggle right here. And pretty soon, here are some more switchbacks up alongside to Ua Point. And to give you some context here, here we are, look at this. So I feel like I'm looking at a stock chart or something. But this is where it really gets close to the top and there's really some walls. And let's just dive a little bit deeper here. This Yuli phone is all over the place. This is not doing good. Let me just get rid of that so we can kind of see it without that clutter in there and see what these other guys are doing. We're pretty good here. We're getting, um, this is going off, the iPhone 15 is off and the Mini 2 have drifted. The Mini 2 is not multi-band. Um, every, every other device is a multi-band. But here on these switchbacks, you can see they're all, they're all off to a certain extent. I'd say if I had to pick two that were the best, I think this one, the Epix Pro and the Apple Watch Ultra 2 are doing good, both multi-bands. Here we get out of that zone. They're coming all back together. Coming back together, 
there's these sections here that make me or lead me to believe that maybe the Google Maps underlying photography isn't totally accurate in terms of the trail because you can see um, it's a little bit smudged and off. But anyway, let's go up to the corkscrew here. It's off too. Let's go to the corkscrew. Let's check in on the Yuli phone. Yuli phone. Okay, it's drifting. It's off. It's off. Here we have some other drift happening as we approach the walls. This is the iPhone 15 drifting a bit. The other ones are looking pretty good. What is this guy? Apple Watch Ultra 2 having a little bit of a hard time there. Okay, so here we are at a section called the corkscrew, which is I knew would be the most challenging, uh, basically right up the cliff wall here. And let's just take some away so we can see what's what in relation to the trail. So this is the Apple Watch Ultra 2. It struggles there. You could see there's the trail right over here. Um, it's okay. It's respectable. I'll take that. Let's see what the Epix Pro does. Epix Pro falls down a bit there and there. Picks it up right back there. Okay. You know, I'd expect actually a little bit better from a multiband than all of these. Here's the 67. 67 looks pretty clean. You can see the switchbacks there. 15, same deal. That's pretty good. Compared to the 67, the 15 is pretty good. I mean, these are all respectable. This is a, about, probably about as challenging as you're going to get. Let's see what the Mini 2 did. Wow, look at that. The Mini 2, which is not multi-band, it's just multi-GNSS, uh, has, has done very well here. Maybe better than the Apple Watch Ultra. Better than the Epix Pro, for sure. Interesting. And let's just see for giggles what the Yuli phone did. Yuli phone is all over the place. Not horrible. You could see I'm already in the wrong place there to start. And if I compare this to the iPhone 15, you can see iPhone 15 has me on the trail. This has me somewhere different. I don't know if this is a Yuli phone thing or an Android phone uh, thing. I wish I had another Android phone with me. I, I, if I would have known this would be so crazy, I would have brought another one. But anyway, that's how it all is going up there. So if I had to pick a winner, um, I would say that they all did respectable except for the Yuli phone. And if we look at the different distances, let's just take a look at those and see where they come in overall. I've got a 2.97. I've got a 3.05, 2.93, 2.95, 2.99, and a very inaccurate 3.5 miles for the Yuli phone. I think overall, aside from the Yuli phone, these all did respectable and they're all within a margin that I would find acceptable if I was measuring a hike. If you have any questions, just leave me a comment underneath the video and I'll do my best to answer it. And thank you to everyone who supports this channel and lets me do these videos uh, free of ads for green shakes, VPNs and all that stuff. So I appreciate it. Thank you so much and uh, stay safe and I will see you out on the trail.